Hey guys, it's Alejandro. We're going to be talking about the creative process, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about why it's so important that you guys need to be developing and honing in on your creative process. Think of when you're driving and you first started learning how to drive. Nobody really likes it when somebody that's sitting in the back seat or in the passenger seat tries to tell you how to drive. It's better if you figure it out on your own by getting on the road and trying different things and learning on your own and figuring things out as you go along. That's the best way that you can figure out your own creative process. And it's really important that you do it on your own because it becomes unique. It's how you develop your creative process ends up turning into how you communicate your own artwork and the vision you have for your artwork. It's personal. So let's talk about an example of what a creative process looks like. And it's gonna change from person to person. For me, my creative process is uh, putting on my favorite music and putting my headphones on and just sitting in the moment in front of the canvas and just enjoying what's happening. I pick up my paintbrush, um, I squirt some paint on the palette, and I just kind of get lost in the images that are going on in my mind or the reference photo itself. And then I just jump into it, but it's, it's a feeling. The creative process is a feeling. For somebody else, it might be painting on the ground and having the canvas laying down flat while you have your favorite movie on. For somebody else, it may be painting outside underneath the stars with the light, with the porch light on. It could be having your pet next to you while you're painting. Everybody's creative process is very unique. You've been in your own creative process before, and it feels like a, like a loss of time almost. You, you get lost in the moment and you forget what's happening. Um, what's happening in your brain are a couple things. First of all, you've moved into different brain waves, and we're not gonna get too much into the details of that, but just know that you're changing your brain wave pattern from one point to a different point. And this is what's allowing you to tap into a different part of yourself that is able to create some beautiful work that you're not necessarily consciously creating. You're not creating it from a logical point of view. You're creating it from an emotional point of view, and that's what's connecting to other people. So your creative process is all about you getting into the flow and out of the flow and managing that process as you go through it. Because there are gonna be times when you're gonna go and dip down and your logical sense is gonna chip back in. It may, you may get jarred by something, maybe a moment or a brush stroke that just makes you feel a little insecure and you question yourself. Understanding your creative process allows you to understand when it's time for you to take a break so you can manage that flow state and get back into it very quickly in order for you to have a successful and very, very good painting. So how do you manage this flow state? How do you take control of it and make it work for you? Well, there are some little tips and tricks you can actually use to get your mind and your emotions into the flow state. And these are like, let's call them rituals. Okay, there are little things that you can do right before you get into the painting process that's gonna set you up in your mind and in your emotions to start feeling good about this process. And it's gonna be very, very useful, especially when you're having kind of an off day, um, perhaps you're a little stressed about something that happened at work or with your relationship, um, perhaps not crazy bad things that are happening in your life, but little distractions that might keep you from getting on the canvas when you really, really need to get on the canvas, okay? Consistency is really what we want to create here, but in order to develop that consistency, we've got to hone in on creating rituals to get in and out of our creative process. So what you need to do is figure out what works for you. It could be making your favorite drink, it could be making your favorite meal, it could be going on a walk, it could be watching your favorite YouTube video. Anything at all that gets you into this really great mood in order for you to jump on the canvas. And that's exactly what you wanna be able to manage. Creating good art is all about creating good feeling. Creating good art is does not work with bad feelings. They just don't mix. So create a ritual for yourself that works in order for you to manage getting in and out of that flow state every single time. And the better you get at it, the more consistent you, you will be with creating good artwork. Now, creating these rituals at first may be very fun because you're doing things that are exciting to you. and um, that are pleasurable, like making your favorite drink or making your favorite meal. The trick is turning these rituals into habits, and that's what's really hard for humans to do. Human beings are not necessarily creatures of habits that they are creating against what they normally try to do, right? So what you need to do is train yourself 
to be consistent with these rituals. Now, these rituals can be lengthy at first. It may take you 30 minutes of a ritual to prepare yourself before you get into a painting or whatever your medium is. Um, over time, these rituals, if you've done them repeatedly, will get shorter and shorter and shorter. So much so, so much so that you are going to be able to possibly even just remember the smell of your favorite dish or remember the taste of your favorite drink. But that's gonna take years and years of practice. What you need to do is be consistent with these rituals so that your brain will automatically know that it's time for you to get into the right feeling before you get on the canvas or whatever medium you're about to put your hands on. So the trick is develop your ritual, get to know exactly what it's like and what it is, commit yourself to that ritual, and then do it repeatedly. And over time, shorten that ritual a little bit at a time so that it doesn't take you as much effort to get in and out of your creative flow state. Talking about your creative flow state and your creative process and getting in and out, developing rituals and habit, those are only going to work if you've committed yourself to actually doing them. And in order to commit yourself to doing that, you're going to have to work it into your daily life. Now, if you're living by yourself and you know you don't have a whole lot of uh, you know commitments, other commitments or time tying up your time, it might be easier for you to carve up some time in the evening um, or in the morning or in the midday in order for you to take care of this. Um, either way, you're gonna have to carve out that time. Now, if you have other commitments like um, you know, if you have children or if you're married, you have a boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever relationship, uh, maybe with your parents or take care of somebody, you're going to have to involve them in what your new commitment is to art so they can understand how important it is to you in order for you to develop this consistency and habit so you can be successful, okay? So in order for you to have what you want in terms of your art career in phase one, you're really gonna have to develop this commitment around your schedule. So that means you're gonna have to get the calendar out, look at your month, and figure out what things you're already committing to and where you can carve out some time around those things and talking to those people that are, as well, you are committed that time to and involve them so they can respect your time and make sure that they're more than willing to give up a little bit of that time you have with them for you to commit to this new venture that you really want to develop. Okay, so let's recap. We are getting to know your creative process. That means you're gonna to have to really understand your own specific and unique creative process. You're gonna to have to experiment and really commit to that creative process. You're gonna to have to develop some rituals so that you can get in and out of that flow state. You're also gonna to have to commit to the habit of actually doing it over time so it becomes a lot easier. Then you're gonna to have to commit to the time in order to create that habit and really get the benefits of those rituals and getting in and out of that flow state. That means you're gonna to have to talk to some family members, talk to whoever it is you need to talk to in order to make sure that that's consistent and that that time is always there for you. Next, what we're going to do is we're gonna be talking about developing inventory, which is gonna be the product of all these things that you're doing with creative process, a habit and ritual, and creating a commitment of time. The next thing that we'll spit out on the other end of that is your inventory. And we're gonna talk about how to create inventory and how to manage it.